Welcome to Positive Filter with your host, Fuller Wilkerson, a podcast that focuses on friends, family, health, and career with a little self-help along the way. Please join me in this journey for self-improvement, and I hope what I have to share will make you a better person, thus making the world a better place. I hope you enjoy the show. I hope you enjoy the show. I hope you enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's Philip Wilkerson back with another episode of Positive Filter. This is just a very short episode. I have on the line, I have Mr. David Meltzer, who is just a phenomenal, inspirational leader, influencer, someone that I follow on social media, particularly LinkedIn. And, you know, he's very busy. So I was like, hey, I got five minutes, 10 minutes of your time. I need to connect with you and also shoot the gems uh, that you're going to share with uh, me and the listeners. So, David, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Give uh, the listeners a little brief who you are, for those that don't know. We're going to go right into it. Just questions I wanted to ask you now that I got your time. You got it. Well, I'm on a mission to empower over a billion people by utilizing all the platforms that I have. I have TV shows like Elevator Pitch, Two Minute Drill, Office Hours on Bloomberg TV, Amazon, and soon a big announcement of a new streaming service. I have a number one podcast called The Playbook, both sports and entertainment and entrepreneur playbook with the billionaires, millionaires, entrepreneurs, celebrities, athletes, and entertainers. I have four books. I speak around the world. I have free training every Friday with over 50,000 people. I have group coaching that I do every single day. I have one-on-one consultative and coaching that I do as well as uh, utilizing all the different mechanisms I can to help people for free by posting as much content as I can on every platform so that I can teach people three simple things to make a lot of money, to live in abundance, to help a lot of people to live as a human and to have fun, to be happy. Those are the three things that I teach people to do. I provide everything for free. Please just join me anytime, Phil, and I'm really excited to answer your question. Well, thank you. So, you know, I look at you as uh, in, you know, informal adopted mentor, you know, you don't know this or not, but I, I, I write down the gems you share. I really share the same philosophy of how you feel about well-being. So these questions are honestly going to be ones that are for me. And if the listeners get a value out of it, you know, that's a bonus, but you know, I, I know I'm going to get a value out of it. So just as a random question, you know, how has, you know, you said abundance, living in abundance, having fun and making money. Let, you know, let's just a recap. How do you think, this current year, 2021, has affected those three pillars for people that you work with or just you in general? Well, I call it, it's been a time of thirds. You know, a third of the people that took their skills and knowledge, which determines your basement, and applied their desire, which determines their potential, and aligned that synergistically supplementary to what's doing well during the pandemic uh, or what's stable during the pandemic or what they think will be doing well, Those thirds are just blowing it away. They're doing incredibly well. Those people that just wanted to stay the same and be safe and stable, they're doing fine. There's plenty of opportunities to stay stable. But those people that looked in what's missing, what they don't want or what other people wanted for them, those people that found the darkness instead of searching for the light, the love and the lessons have had a miserable time. And so the thirds have applied during the pandemic because you give meaning to everything that you see. There's no better time to take advantage of your basement and your ceiling by applying your skills and knowledge and your desire to what's doing well, what's stable, and what you think is doing well, not what's stable or what's not doing well. Let's put our attention and intention onto the coincidences that we want, and that's exactly what will occur. It's a mathematical equation of luck. I love it. Now, you you know, obviously about money, you know, you have a lot of industry knowledge particularly in business and sports. Um, how do you think that has affected, COVID has affected that industry, money, sports, um, in regards to uh, what has happened because of this and then how it's going to go into the future? I know you have a lot of insights on the world of work, specifically in the sports world, how COVID has affected that. Yeah, I think the digital sports world has expanded and grown at an accelerated rate. It just sped up the process for gambling and fantasy and esports and the VR and AR and AI components that exist within what is always one of the most emotionally appealing things on earth, which is the competitive nature of all sports. I think it also has been an equalization, allowing for other sports like pickleball and 
uh, you know, uh, you know, bocce and all, all these other sports that you see. I'm trying to think of the game where you throw the bean bags. That's on ESPN. Cornhole, well. yeah, cornhole. Cornhole, thank you. Yeah, the cornhole. They asked me to be the commissioner of cornhole. I forget about it. Um, <laughs> but golf, golf, you know, obviously as well. Being outdoors, you know, more people got back involved in golf than ever before because of the pandemic. Uh, the team sports, you know, I think people gained an appreciation when the personal viewing, the uh, in-person viewing was not capable. And so we have a great demand that has been pent up for concerts and for, you know, big games. And, you know, who knows what's going to happen with this new kind of surge with the Super Bowl. But, you know, I had a business, Sports One Marketing, with Hall of Fame quarterback Warren Moon, one of the biggest global marketing companies in the world in sports. And in one day, we found out there'd be no Super Bowl, Pro Bowl, Masters, Kentucky Derby, Breeders' Cup, ESPYs, Emmys, Oscars, Grammys. That was a major dent. But we didn't look at what was missing. We simply saw, hey, what's going to be doing well? What's stable? And what do we think will be doing well in the future? And we applied our basement, our skills and knowledge to that over 35 years of it. And, of course, the insatiable desire that we must be what we can be. And we have never had better years than the last two years. So even another question I know has been probably launched over this year. I don't know, this year and last year, the new um, NIL, you know, mm -hmm. uh, student athletes having – uh, mm -hmm. intellectual property and their idea to sponsor and stuff like that. Can you speak to that and how that's changing the game and, and your thoughts on that? Like, are you pro con, whatever? What do you thought? Of, what are, what are well, your thoughts I'm very on pro. That? I'm very pro NIL, the naming image and likeness rule stated by the NCAA that a student can monetize their name, their image and their likeness. And what has occurred is the people that were getting paid under the table are just now making more money getting paid over the table and the people paying them are receiving the benefit of their likeness, name and image aligned with who they are, especially with social media. So the car dealer that went to Alabama that used to give cash to the kid now gives him a million dollars to truly endorse his auto dealership and he sells more cars and the kid has value in what he provides. And it was never fa fair that the people who had the bigger brands, the bigger names, the bigger image, the bigger licensing opportunities were making the money. The other area that I find and I love is just uh, allowing people who never had a, uh, a chance of making money that own a certain frequency or a certain spectrum of a certain community. So, you know, I pay several different college kids to post my videos. So I take, you know, the captain of the Harvard hockey team that I want his community, because that's my community, those student athletes, uh, to learn more about, because those are the leaders, you know, I'm on a mission to empower over a billion people. Uh, I need a thousand of those Harvard and Stanford and those kids that are going to empower a thousand to empower a thousand. So, you know, there's so many unique opportunities and uh, there's only good things that can happen from it. It just, the only ones affected is the NCAA will dissipate and dissolve eventually uh, because, you know, they had their run, they set it up, but the manipulation uh, and, you know, the regulations just are not re a reality for the democratization of college sports. I love that. Now, one of my thoughts, though, this is just random, is that do you think that the high profile players would be disruptive to the team in a sense that like, I don't know, I mean, not like the NFL, but like, you know, I'm a star. I'm a I'm a 19 year old kid. I'm the star of the team. Is that going to you think that's going to affect their coachability like speak to that, like the, the more intangible qualities you think could come out of that. Yeah, I don't think it's the attention uh, because, you know, when you're Alabama's quarterback, you got all the attention in the world. What I think we have to be fearful is financial literacy uh, mm -hmm. that, you know, giving a lot of money to uh, financially illiterate 18 year olds always causes problems. Uh, no matter, it's not just athletes, it's the age and the, and the knowledge. So that's where you're going to see the disruption is, you know, you start throwing a million dollars at an 18 year old and a 19 year old. It's bad enough when we do it to 22 year olds and 23 year olds, you're entering a whole nother realm of irresponsibility. Uh, the lessons that need to be learned. Look, I'm a guy who lost over a hundred million dollars in my thirties because uh, I had too much money. I, I, I literally tell people all the time, man, if I had over a hundred million dollars when I was 18, I'd be dead. Uh, and I almost did it to myself when I was 38. Luckily, I have extraordinary wife and people around me uh, to set my head straight and allow me to recover uh, into an extraordinary life of abundance, of making a lot of money, helping a lot of people and having a lot of fun. I love it. You now, it's funny because I'm smiling and laughing. They can't see that. But like, definitely, if I had that all that money, too, when I was 18, uh, I'd be in big trouble. So shout out to my wives. It's always good to have 
someone that, you know, keep you on a straight and narrow. So shout out to our wives. So, you know, looking ahead, you know, about that abundance mindset, you know, I think uh, a lot of things as I work in careers, working with students in career services, I've always understand, like, what is the future of work? What are, you know, the skills that we need to really empower students, regardless they're transferable. And so ones that come to mind are like technology literacy, you know, just knowing anything, doesn't matter what your major is, knowing how to communicate, be a public speaker, those, it doesn't matter, knowing how to synthesize data, everyone, even if you're not into math, I need to know numbers. So what do you think moving in the future of work, uh, particularly just some things and observations that you have, what do you think people should just intangible skills that people should build to make themselves marketable? Well, the ones you listed are absolutely marketable, but there's one that you're missing, curiosity. See, there's so much data out there. there there's so much information out there uh, that our curiosities are being stifled by the amount of technology and information that exists already. And so those people that have the greatest gift of curiosity that creates uh, anything that we want. See, when someone's curious, they take nothing and they turn it into a possibility. If someone's curious, they can take the possibility, become inspired and make it a probability. If someone's curious, they can take a probability and inspired thought with strategy, awareness and discipline through that curiosity and make that probability their perspective or reality. The entire process of getting what you want in life is through that skill set of curiosity, of being more interested than interesting. And if we can empower people with the habit machine, with the daily practices and the values that inspire others to inspire others, elevate others to elevate others, even celebrate others to celebrate others. If we can do that through curiosity and creativity, I think we will be fine with all the other pragmatic skill sets of financial technology and communication. I love it. So this is my last question, because I know you're a busy man. What is, you know, this is just a, your individual. What is something you're looking forward to in the new year? I know you live, I know you live in the presence. I know you always Mr. Mindful and, you know, uh, you know, I, I love what I'm doing. I love my life at this moment, but you know, we also are optimistic and hopeful. So what are some things just for you anecdotally or, you know, that you're just looking forward to in the new year? Yeah. You know, I have a, a big uh, streaming deal for all my content. So we'll be announcing a huge, uh, deal. Martha Stewart and I both signed these deals and uh, it's going to be the biggest distribution that I've ever had for my TV shows, my podcasts, my books, uh, other content that I can create for entrepreneurs. Uh, so that's the biggest thing in the, in the activity I get paid for. I don't call it work. I call it activity I get paid for. Um, and then my marriage, uh, you know, which is inclusive of my children. Uh, I have never had a better year of marriage. Uh, I wake up every morning uh, just feeling so blessed uh, to spend my life with the most extraordinary person, my wife. And I, you know, I tell her all the time, I just can't stand how much I love you. And I love that feeling. And I just want to see, you know, next year to take it even to a, a, another level of fulfillment, of passion and purpose to share it with a witness. Uh, someone like her is a blessing from God. So uh, my activity I get paid for, we'll be announcing in January a huge streaming deal. Uh, and then two, just my relationship with family uh, to expand, grow and accelerate, to leave my legacy of being kind to our future selves by doing good deeds. Man, I, I, I mainly took notes on saying loving my wife, man, like you're the smoothest talker. Like, I think, you know, man, you got mad game man. I, I couldn't. I don't know how I could top that. Like, I just like, I love you, Maggie. You know what I'm saying? But you, you, I, I can't like I'm speechless, man. That was Been married that was 24 crazy. years. And uh She's put uh, put her through a lot, so but uh, I'm blessed. Well, thank you so much. So I know that we respect your time. So to kind of just, you know, land this plane a little bit, you know, um, Mr. Meltzer, anything that you want to share with the listeners, shout outs and plugs. I know you did a, sure. a few shout outs, but this is your time. And then I know that you got a hard stop and then you had to go. But also mm -hmm. let me just say my plug and shout out to you is thank you for your the minutes that I have. Like I said, you dropped so much knowledge and things that are very applicable and I follow you all the time from a distance. So as a distance, I call you my virtual mentor. You don't know it, but I, I definitely listen to your things. And I use that before I did M abundance mindset. It came out in a conversation and then I was like, wow, I got that from you. Like you don't realize how often the things that you're planting in others shows up in just conversation that showed up in my, one of my actual career conversations, one-on-one -on -one with a student. I was like, abundance mindset. We need to add that now that a deficit mindset. So, you know, shout out to you, but your time, your, your platform, whatever you want to share. Thank you. Well, 
Speaking of thank you, I want to teach everyone to say thank you before they go to bed and wake up. In fact, I have a 14-day gratitude challenge. And if you can get done with this challenge, it's free. It takes 0.1 seconds a day. But if you do the 14-day gratitude challenge, you can email me. My email's right there, david at dmeltzer.com, david at dmeltzer.com. You complete the 14-day gratitude challenge, I will send you the Meltzer uh, package of free books, guides, and exercises. I'll sign a copy, send it to you, pay for shipping. Just finish the 14-day gratitude challenge. I do free training every Friday. Join me on that. I have group coaching for you, one-on-one -on -one group coaching every single week virtually. I have one-on-one -on -one wait list. If you're a little bit further along and you need some one-on-one -on -one help, I have a wait list for that. Uh, you know, anything that you need. But let's start with the 14-day gratitude challenge. Email me directly, david at dmelzer.com, and I will send you that if you complete it. I will send you a care package from me with books, guides, exercises, all of that for free. I'll sign a copy, send it to you, pay for shipping. Just reach out to me, david at dmelzer.com. I love it. Well, I'm already going to just say, I already did my, I do like a whole 160 days. I, I'm very grateful every day. So I know I'm, I'm going to follow up on those instructions, you know, because it's, it's already a done deal for me. Well, thank you so much, um, you know, David. This has been a great episode for those please share this with your family and friends please follow up with david and all the amazing things i'll put a lot of links a lot of stuff in the show notes he's been an inspiration to me if you like this episode please share it with your family and friends uh, call the hotline which is 571-336-6560 sharing positivity is a movement thank you so much and we're out thank you for listening to positive filter a podcast that focuses on family friends career with a little self-help along the way if you enjoyed this podcast please share it with your family and friends and like the Facebook page, spreading positivity of movement. Thanks for listening.